Anyang Haseo. I would like to thank the Education Commission Asia and former Minister of Education Ju Ho Lee for inviting me to speak with you today. As an educator, it is an honor to share some thoughts with you about the importance of placing a concern for equity at the center of our thinking as we seek ways to narrow gaps in achievement while embracing technologies such as artificial intelligence, or as we commonly refer to it, AI. I would like to start with an obvious point about the inequality that we are witnessing, as well as a comment about a structural issue that we must address in the United States in education before moving into how AI can play an important role in addressing inequality in education and improving the, the learning experience for all students. So first, the obvious point. In 2020 and 2021, the global COVID-19 pandemic created an enormous disruption to education in every country on the planet. And as we were forced to close schools and move instruction online for as many students as possible, the pandemic made painfully visible some of the ways that income inequality has always impacted learning. We have had a digital divide for as long as we have had access to the internet, but in countries like the US and Korea, the pandemic forced us to scramble for ways to ensure that every student had access to the internet at home and to at least one device to access it. And in the United States, we've been forced to recognize that the so-called invisible hand of the economy had never carried the internet to poor neighborhoods and rural areas which left millions without access. And as teachers and school leaders scrambled to check on the well-being of their students, more educators became aware that the digital divide was the proverbial tip of the iceberg and that just below the surface, the digital divide was really always a homework divide because many students needed to leave their homes to find internet access, often in the parking lots of fast food restaurants, and that many, who were lucky enough to have internet at home, lived in apartments where they lacked a quiet private place to do their homework or to feel comfortable having their cameras and microphones turned on when they zoomed into class. Life is anything but equal outside of the school environment and a student's life outside of school impacts how they do at school. And in the United States, as teachers and school counselors and school leaders started to learn more about the home lives of their students, and as many families adjusted to parents being out of work as workplaces shut down, educators became painfully aware of how many of their students were dependent on the federal free lunch programs delivered through schools to meet their basic nutritional needs. So schools expanded those programs and made it possible for students and their families to pick up basic meals prepared by school staff and volunteers during the week. And they worried about how those families uh, were doing and whether they had enough food to eat over the weekends. And because I've said that this is a time that requires open and honest discussion, I will also say that in many communities in the U.S., we became aware that many of our teachers were struggling to pay their bills and might not have access to internet at home because of its expense and might also need food assistance because the purchasing power of their salaries has declined in recent decades. If this is not a concern in Korea, we may need to look to you for guidance about how to get back on the right path. I mention these things because poverty and even more broadly income inequality are systemic social issues and must be recognized and treated as such. So let me make my second and perhaps less obvious point about a structural issue that we face in the United States. As the pandemic has reminded us, schools do not exist in isolation. Schools are part of a web of social systems that can either be more equitable or less equitable in terms of their ability to promote social mobility and to provide each student with a fair and equitable chance to develop their individual talents and capabilities. In the United States, that means that we must not hide from the fact that inequalities in our education system are a design feature and not a bug. And that means that we will not be able to tinker at the margins of the classroom if we wanna have a beneficial impact on equity at scale in our society as a whole. Universal high school education in the United States has been a reality for about a century and it played a key role in the nation's growth and development as a driver of individual and national prosperity and global economic growth, much as universal secondary education has trans transformed the Korean economy since 1945. But the historical truth 
is that roughly a century ago, the commission that designed our high school curriculum in the US did not set out to create a meritocratic talent development system for a nation, but instead had the goal of preparing students to be slightly better educated than their parents so that they could eventually replace their parents in the workforce, but be slightly more productive. That means different learning experiences and supports based on your parents' education and profession or occupation. There's nothing equitable about that design. That vision, combined with a reliance on local tax revenues to pay for local schools and the impact of racial segregation, led to schools that offered unequal access to high quality education. And we continue to see the impacts of those inequitable design features today in terms of our reliance on less experienced teachers and administrators and less wealthy schools or students having less access to more advanced, more rigorous classes, depending on the schools that serve the neighborhoods where they are born. So where do we go from here and how can AI help? I think we need to face the realities of the good and the bad and what we have inherited. And then we must face each other and decide whether we will have the will to advocate for all students to build a more equitable foundation for future generations. Why am I optimistic that we can create a more equitable future? Because I believe in teachers. And I believe that teaching is both the mother of all other professions and the catalyst for innovations and insights that have the power to move humanity forward. But we need our educators to use their voices as advocates and to play an active role in designing and building the equitable future that will benefit us all. Our best teachers help students experience school as a place that is physically, socially, and psychologically safe. And they help students know that at least one adult who is not related to them cares about them, values them, and sees their potential. These are the teachers we remember for all of our lifetimes because they change our lives and help us discover our own strengths and talents. I believe that our efforts to create more equitable education and to leverage technology in service of that noble aspiration can succeed. I've often said that if you wanna help a student, you should begin by helping a teacher. And so I wanna encourage the teachers and other educators who are participating in this historic conference to speak your truths and share your ideas about ways that AI can be a helpful tool. Perhaps by saving you time and preparing homework or quiz items for your review that are matched to the individual abilities and learning needs of your students. Or by providing analytics and recommendations to help you differentiate individual or group instruction. Or maybe by providing students with an option to share information that might help you consider your options for how best to engage them in your class on a particular day. Or maybe by identifying a peer who does a particularly effective job of helping students understand a complex topic that you want your students to master so that you can ask that fellow teacher for help. Each of these ideas reflects a human-centered or teacher-centered teacher idea about the use of AI to support the complex and multifaceted roles played by teachers. Thus, we might think about the role that augmentative rather than artificial intelligence might play in strengthening the vital and irreplaceable role played by teachers. And as the three I's in RID's name suggest, remove inequality, inefficiency, and inconsistency in the learning experience. At RID, we are very grateful for the opportunity to organize the conference program for today. Over the course of the day, we will cover core elements that define this whole new AI education sector while tackling issues and considerations for building a healthy and sustainable learning ecosystem. We believe that when carefully designed, AI can create solutions that our educational system and teachers desperately need. And as an educator, I believe this can lead to transformation in education in ways that we have all longed for. We hope that today's discussions between teachers, educators, and policymakers will open a new phase of discovery as we think together about how much more humanity can achieve through the wise use of AI. Kamsamadab. Thank you again for this opportunity to speak with you today.